So today we're actually finding the antiderivative of, uh, of three um, particular um, sums here. And um, essentially what we want to do is to leverage our understanding of, um, of integral properties for definite integration. So the first thing that sort of sticks out to me is that we are finding the antiderivative of an interval um, of the same number. So if you recall um, briefly um, what that would look like, well, you would have, um, let's say some graph here um, and you would have your function, which is X to the third in the first quadrant would look something like this. And you're told you want to find the, um, the antiderivative of X to the third um, or the, uh, the graph um, or the area under the graph of X to the third from two to two. So uh, something like that would be at a particular point like two. So you want to find the area under the curve, but of course two is uh, its own interval in the sense that it, it's, it, it, there really is no dimension for which you can actually find the area under the curve. Um, and of course a point or a line doesn't actually have any dimension. Um, and thus the area under the curve for a point um, would of course be, uh, be zero. So you can think of this as essentially going to, uh, going to zero. That essentially leaves us with this component here. And um, we immediately remember that um, we're looking at um, what one, one what one could call the uh, the reverse bounded rule, I believe, uh, which states that if we have, um, let's say, if we're told to find the integral on a particular interval, um, this is how it would normally look. Um, but if it's reversed, um, maybe something of the form of, uh, let's say, um, B to A, then this essentially just becomes negative. So that would essentially be um, the reasoning uh, behind that. Um, so we can rewrite this as being the, uh, the uh, finding the integral um, from the region zero to one x squared dx added to uh, the integral from zero to three x squared dx. Now immediately you notice that we're actually finding the integral of the same function. So if we were to sort of draw this function here, we have a, uh, a parabola here, a parabolic function. Actually, that looks more like an absolute value function. Let's get a nice curve here. So the idea here is to um, understand that we want to find the area under um, the curve um, from what seems to be like zero to three, because you, you recognize this component as trying to find the area under the curve from zero to three. And then we want to subtract from that um, the area under the curve from zero to one. So that, that would be about uh, right here. So essentially we want to find the area under the curve from zero to three, but we want to subtract the area under the curve from zero to one. That would essentially just be leaving us with finding the area under the curve from one to three, which in notation can look like finding the antiderivative of, um, of x squared from one to three, because of course we're excluding the zero to one. 
this would essentially come out to be um, having the antiderivative of x to the cubed over three. And we would essentially want to plug in three, the upper bounded um, limit and subtract that from one. Um, and then of course, if I were to plug in three here, I would get 27 over three, which would be nine. And I would subtract that from f of one, which would be one over three. 